What's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another episode of The Dossier, where we share our potato opinions, hot takes, and overall just general inexperience with the game. Uh, I am joined today by Jason from Z-Trox Wargaming, who's hey, becoming quite a regular on this channel. It turns out, yeah. <laughs> it turns out, yeah. And uh, he has uh, agreed to join me and chat about the new Marvel Core Box 2.0 uh, characters, because he is a little bit more familiar with Avengers than I am. So it, uh, I feel he gives a little bit better insight than I'm able to on this one. Uh, with today's episode, we are going to be talking about Captain of Marvel, the Cosmic First Avenger. Uh, the, the Cosmic Avenger. Cosmic rather. Avenger, yeah. No first I'm getting get a whole bunch of things in there. She might be the first Cosmic Avenger. <laughs> you know what? You might be right. So, uh, but yeah, so we're talking about New Carol today. And this is one I've been very excited about because, frankly, I think New Carol is just absolutely wonderful. Uh, she comes with a transforming mechanic, which is really cool. So let's let's quickly talk about the models. Like this is this is her non-binary form model right here, and I mean it's it's heroic. It's simple. Yep. There's not a whole lot going on to it, uh, but I, I like it. Yeah, I like no, it quite it's really good. I love that it's a it's a bit of an action sequence, and I mean not to start talking about the other one too soon, but I love that it kind of goes into the other one. It looks like a very natural transition into the other one. For sure. Um, something I really like about this is they actually give you the option of three different heads. Oh, really? There is a uh, there is a short hair I uh, Carol okay. as well. I, I opted for the long hair. I just I like the look of it a little bit more. I think it gives a little bit more flow to it all, a little bit more sense of movement. Um, but there is the, the short hair one as well uh, for people, so they do have that option. And otherwise, very simple to put together. Like again, AMG has really been been upping their craft when it comes to designing these models and just making it really easy to to get them on the table. Um, and then obviously we have the the binary form version of her right here as well. And you can see, as Jason was saying, like you're you're absolutely right. Yeah. There there is a natural sense of progression there. She's on the ground, and boom! Now she has her her helmet and mohawk going on. Uh, and just, yeah, it, it's a great model. I oh, love yeah. it. No, it, it's fantastic. It's a good, you know, it's an action pose that doesn't feel out of place anywhere. Like it, it works on any part of the, uh, on any part of the table at any time. Cause it's, it's a really nice sculpt. It is. It is. I, it's, it's definitely up there as one of my favorites in the box. Um, I think core box or uh, new widow is still my absolute yeah, new favorite. Widow is hard to beat. Um, but yeah, just great models, just so dynamic. And especially over the, the previous one, cause the previous one was just kind of her sort of like, Posed in almost like a mid-flight, you know, come at me uh, type stance, and this one it actually shows she's much more aggressive, and her card reflects that. Oh, for sure. Right. Um, so yeah, let's let's actually talk her card. So <laughs> let's talk her non-binary form card first, um, because she actually has two cards with a uh, with this transform mechanic. Um, so yeah, like you you look at her stat line: fours across the board for defense, seven stamina, five threat, size two, medium movement. The big noticeable thing there is the the extra stamina and the fours yes. across the board. Um, she doesn't gain any any defensive stats for being in binary form. No, uh, not anymore, point. unfortunately. Um, but she makes up for it by not being as squishy. Yeah, no, like, she's got a little bit of extra health to go around. She's got some some defensive tech that's a little bit more universal than her old one, um, which because uh, now it works on Mystics too. Basically, I think is the only change. Oh, and she. Did she gain power for it before? I don't remember. Uh, the enhanced energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she gained that one. Okay. Yeah. So let yeah let's talk her abilities here. Um. So yeah, you want to leave us off with uh, with her attacks? Yeah, sure. So she's got two attacks here, and they're both zero cost. So they're both builders that you can you can do right out the gate. She's got photon blast and sonic boom. So photon blast is a range four five dice energy. Uh, it's going to be a builder. And uh, she's got a wild, or is it wilder hit? It's there? a wild pursuit. Wild yeah. pursuit. So uh, before damage is dealt, she can move towards them, help her close the gap a little bit. Um, Which is something old Carol was missing. It was the biggest problem, I think, with old Carol was she had no charge or anything like that. So being able to do that on there is great. And then her next attack, slightly shorter range. We're looking at range three this time, but it is six dice. So six dice on a builder is always nice to see. Uh, it's a, it is another builder, and it's got wild concussive, so it's going to make the target character lose power, mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, quite good. I mean, having six dice builders or a five dice builder at range, can't complain about either of those. For sure. No, great, both great quality attacks, yeah. Um, so then we have uh, just, it's all innate abilities as well. Yeah. On this yeah, side. Yeah, she's no, not spending power on this side. Which is awesome. So she's got enhanced energy absorption, which, like her previous one, it's uh, when defending against energy or mystic this time, for each wild, the wilds uh, will change a uh, crit, res uh, crit wild or hit result to a blank. And you're going to gain power for each die change that way. Yep. So basically a reverse pierce almost. Yeah. And now that it also encompasses Mystic as well, like it's it's, it's going to be harder. a lot more universal. It's a lot harder to avoid it for sure. Uh, she's got higher, further, faster. 
where uh, as soon as uh, at the start of her next activation, if she has six or more power, she transforms into binary form, which again, really cool. It's not, it's not a pay cost, yep. which is really nice. Uh, there's other, there's another really nice mechanic. We'll talk about it on her binary form card, uh, but it's really cool. Uh, damage reduction. Yep. Or not damage, or not damage reduction. Uh, sorry. Ornery. 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 Yeah. yeah. Ornery. I don't, I don't know why I always look at that as damage reduction. I, I, it's the first thing I think as well, the way the symbols are set yep. up. Uh, but yeah, so she has ornery as well, which is again really cool. It's it's just gonna punish people for going into her, uh, yep. which is really nice. And then flight immunity to incinerate and poison. Yep, so, immunity to incinerate's fantastic. Well, I mean, I think those are the same immunities old Carol had. Incinerate um, for sure. I can't remember about poison. Um, but also being immune to a poison is is pretty good for her because she really wants to get up into that binary form. She needs to build to the sixth power, so not slowing down her her yep. building is gonna be really good. No, for sure. It's it's a really solid card. But then she goes binary. Oh, yeah. And her, her stats say the same, but she's got some really big changes here. And uh, just because you walloped me with this, why don't you talk about her attacks? Sure. So, yeah, she's got she's got two attacks, and they're both technically spenders. So neither of them are free this time around. The first one is Binary Blast. It's a range two, so she wants to be a little more up close and personal, but it's going to be a six dice. It's only going to cost you one power. Uh, after the attack is resolved, she's going to give a push. That's an automatic push, no wilds or anything needed. Uh, just a short, but still very relevant. And then a wild incinerate, which is absolutely amazing on a, on a small attack like that. Yep. Uh, so yeah, wild incinerates and pushes, can't complain. Next, she's got her spender, which is really good, or I guess her, her real spender. Uh, it's going to cost her three, it's going to be range three, and it's going to throw eight dice on the energy side. Uh, she's going to place within two of the target character, so she's still got a lot of versatility on the place there. Again, it's it's more movement, yeah. which uh, she was lacking a the, lot. The old right? one really needed. Uh, wild throw, so that's always good, and it looks like any size, if I'm reading that right. Yep. So any size, small throw, which is fantastic, and then a crit wild explosive. Uh, interestingly, the crit wild explosive is before damage is dealt, so you can't throw them at something and then have the explosive trigger. But the other really big thing about this is it means that uh, if you happen to just really dummy someone, Yep. That, that explosive still goes off. Yep. Because how many effects have we seen where it's like, oh, well, they've been KO'd, so no effect for you, right? Yep. No, for sure. And uh, it's it's a really powerful attack as we saw yeah, in that game. Yeah, check it check out the battle report. You'll you'll see what it does. Uh, yeah, so for her powers, we got I'm just getting warmed up, which is a two cost size four throw for medium. So good. That is Hulk levels of shenanigans it's, almost. It's literally Hulk's throw. It's it's pretty much text like word for word Hulk's throw. Really good. I mean, it's part of why Hulk is such a good model. Yeah, like it, it is it is a great throw. Like, you do have to be in binary form for it, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, ready or not, for free. A free charge. Yeah, which is absurd. Oh. I mean, of course, no matter what attack she's using, she's going to be spending some power on that charge. But still. But it's free. It's so good. This this Carol is so much more mobile. Yes. And it, it just it helps so much. Uh, I don't need a power-up to kick your butt for zero power. This one I really like. This yeah. gives you a lot of agency over how binary form works. Basically, once you are below three power, uh, you can transform into Captain Marvel Cosmic Avenger normal. Uh, so you can start gaining more power back that way. It gives you a lot more agency, so it's no longer just ends yep which is really nice and the the big catch on it is um it's when you would spend power or when you spend power that would be true yeah right. when this character spends or loses power after the effect is resolved so you could choose to do that by picking up an objective by making your basic you know one cost attack whatever you're doing as long as you have a single power you can find a reason to spend yeah. you can transform and it gives you that that aspect of control which is huge um, and then, of course, we got the enhanced energy absorption again. And uh, on this side, she gains immunity to stagger and stun as well. Yeah, which is a big deal because on this side, if you do want to keep her around in this side, because as you mentioned, it is optional, um, being immune to stun will, will help you continue gaining a power from, from things punching you and things like that. Yeah. So very, very exciting card. I, I like everything on the card. Um, in the new box, there's only one card that really mentions her, which is Overcharge here. So we're just going to kind of give it a quick note. Uh, it's unaffiliated, active. Uh, during either Thor or uh, Carol's uh, activation, spend five power, and an allied Tony Stark within five basically can make uh, the attack uh, up here, which is overcharge, area two, six dice. Uh, after each attack is resolved, it's a gainer, and after the attack is resolved, the target characters gain shock. Yeah. No, nothing too fancy or special there. Yep, but. nothing crazy, but it is worth mentioning because it is something yeah. either of the Carols can do. So, yeah, so let's let's talk about where, where she really slots in because obviously at this point the, the official affiliations have not, as of filming, have not been revealed here. Yeah. So it's very likely she's Avengers. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, that's <laughs> she has Avenger in her name. Yeah. Uh, I think it's probably likely she'll probably be in A-Force. I would I be hope. surprised if she wasn't. Um, I, I hope she will be. I've seen some speculation that she might get S.H.I.E.L.D. That would be cool. And I'd, be, okay I'd, I'd be very happy for that. I think she'd be an excellent uh, addition to S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, gives them a little bit more melee things, too. Yeah. Where would you like to see her? Oh, that's that's hard. Because, I mean, I think you hit the main three that would make sense for her right there. Um, Clearly Guardians, right? Yeah, I mean, that would be fantastic. <laughs> I would, gonna be so I would love to put her in Guardians. I don't think that she should by any means, but I think she'd be very good there. Um, for what it's worth, I think running her in Guardians is a solid option, giving her... Uh, rerolls through um, winging it tokens because that's the one thing she doesn't really have on her own is rerolls. Uh, it could be fun to see her in uh, in her OG skull uh, cabal. Okay, where yeah. anytime she does damage, she just gets some power. That'd be really it. good because now your now your six dice uh, one cost spender is is it's refunding self, you. Is self sustaining, yeah. Yeah. Um, I also I think this has been mentioned before, but Inhumans yep. uh, would be really good to just keep her powered up. Uh, or if you want to be obnoxious, web warriors. Yep. So just, web just, warriors give her some defensive rerolls yeah. going around. So no, there, there's a lot of really interesting places I think she can slot in. Um, now, of course, her biggest thing being a five threat, it's hard to splash a five threat. Yep. Uh, it's it's become a very competitive slot over this past year, uh, with a lot of really good five threat characters kicking around. Uh, but yeah, I think I think there's definitely an argument to, to make for her. In a yeah, bunch of places. no, I think she's a very solid model. She's going to see play in I think all versions, mostly the new Steve, but all versions of the Avengers. Um, and I mean, tons of places. I think she'd be. You know, I I wouldn't question it too much if you chose to splash her pretty much anywhere. She's a very good self sufficient model. She doesn't really need much to do her job. And with with the energy absorption for both uh, Mystic and energy. She's a lot Ooh, more... Convocation! That would be on rude. On Iron Bound's turn. That would be rude. That would be super rude. I want to see it now. Yeah, no, I, that I, actually I, sounds super Oh, cool. that's rude. I love it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that is that is Captain Marvel Cosmic Avenger. Uh, I don't think it's any word of a lie that we're both very excited about this Oh, no, uh, I'm so this ready for this model. Um, yeah, so go check out the battle report. You can see just how well she did in that one. And of course, if you guys are looking to support the channel, patreon.com slash Studios. Uh, I want to thank AMG for sending out this uh, this early review copy. Uh, of these uh, Core Box 2.0, and I want to thank everyone for watching and all my patrons as well. Thank you so much. Happy Wargaming.